looks like some folks are still coming in. And I know, I think uh, Kristen said that folks will be coming in um, during the workshop. So, um, all right. So, um, all right. I got the okay to go ahead and start. So thank you everyone for being here. I'm really excited. I literally just came from teaching my regular class at PNCA. They're pretty excited to let them out for me to let them off of um, out of class early. It's been a weird um, kind of semester with everything. And then I'm here in Portland. So the world is literally burning around me, but um, this will be a nice distraction to kind of spend the evening um, with all of you. So um, I'm going to go and pull up a slide. I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share. Um, so you don't have to look at my weird desk. Um, I think my face will still be floating around there. Um, so you get to see that. But let me switch to my share my desktop. Uh, I made these slides, we might as well use them, right? So thank you. Um, I want to thank the Believer for hosting this workshop for having me. Um, this workshop is uh, Making Comics Without Words. I am Jonathan Hill. I'm a cartoonist um, and I teach comics and I serve on the board of directors for literary arts here in Portland. Um, and I, I will say that I was a little intimidated when I got to ask and I got to see everybody else's um, who was doing their workshops. They were doing these great workshops about sort of like social emotional learning and tying it with art and, um, you know, like uh, resistance comics and things like that. And when it came time for me to come up with something, I uh, kind of fell on my old standby of, uh, I didn't have, I felt like I didn't have something as sort of like relevant. So I kind of fell on this old standby of just, um, I, I just, I love storytelling. Um, and so we're going to be making comics without words and kind of really looking at, um, digging deep into uh, what goes into making good stories and, and doing some editing and stuff. So, um, all right, so let me make sure I go through here. All right, so for supplies, like I already said this, um, but if for those of you that are coming in, you're gonna need um, index cards or post-it notes will work. Um, or if you just have paper that you just need to cut up, that's okay too. These are gonna kind of serve as our panels. Um, and the, nothing fancy. Um, but you're going to want, honestly, smaller maybe is going to be a little bit better because we're going to be doing some drawing, um, kind of, kind of quick drawing here. Um, you're going to need something to draw with. Um, so that means, um, you know, anything you have really pencils, crayons, um, Sharpies, I'd recommend a fine tip Sharpie. Um, it's if, if you don't have it, but I'll let you get that together. All right. And so I, this is going to be pretty, um, we're going to kind of go through this and there's going to be, it's kind of this exercise. If I saw some folks that I've had in class before. Um, and so this is actually my favorite exercise that I've done in that class. So this isn't something new for so, those handful of folks I saw, but I think it's always good practice and it's, it's my favorite exercise. So I'm trying to move the zoom thing so I can read the slides I've made. So, all right. So this is what's going to happen for tonight. It's actually going to be, um, it's, it's going to be kind of like bang, bang, bang. Um, and that uh, basically I'm going to give you a sentence and you're going to draw that sentence. And I'm going to ask you not to use words because what we're really focusing on is just like the, the storytelling, the, the visual element of comics. Um, what I want you to do is as I give you these sentences, think about how you can show, I mean, I'm sure anyone that's taking a writing class is, uh, you know, um, you, you show, don't tell. In comics, that's literally what you should be doing because you can show it with drawings. You don't need to just have it be in the words. Um, so that's what I want you to think about. And you're only going to have about five minutes per panel. All right. So I know that seem, that doesn't seem like a lot of time, but what it makes you do is it forces you to worry about drawing clearly and not worrying about drawing good. All right. Or, or well is maybe the proper grammar. I, I, sorry, I'm not great at that. Um, but if you're drawing stick figures, as long as we can tell what the stick figures are doing, um, where they're at in, in relationship to the setting and all that stuff, that's, that's the most important thing. It's not really like how, and, and so I, I teach this in my classes because I think getting the storytelling down, you can always make it prettier later, but like getting your ideas down quickly and being able to communicate them quickly is, um, is really, really important. So, um, all right. So is every, I, I should, I should rewind to make sure everyone ready. I should have, I didn't want to just drop it on you. You have your, you have your, um, your sticky notes or your um, paper, your pencils ready to go. All right. So everyone ready for the first sentence? I can't hear you. So I'm just going to kind of guess. Okay. Um, all right. So for the first 
Oh, come on, technology. Oops, oh my gosh. Okay, so for the first, first sentence, a character walks down the street. Who is the character? Can their appearance and body language tell us about them? Where is the street? And then how does this setting add to the atmosphere? All right. Um, uh, again, this character can be anyone you want, any, any person, any creature, anything. Um, but just as you're drawing it, don't just draw a character walking. Think about how the walking, and I'm going to try to do this while I'm talking to you. I wouldn't make, I always tell my students, I wouldn't ask them to do anything I wouldn't do myself. So I'm going to try to do that, that too. Um, but how, how is all of this kind of coming together to, um, to tell us, to show us, because we're, we're not telling, we're, sh we're showing. So, and I got to keep an eye on the time. And get, so we've got about, you know, we'll say, we'll say four minutes, four and a half, I'll be, I'll be nice. Um, And again, I know some folks don't draw well under pressure or under time. And if you don't, that's okay. Um, just do your best. That's all we can ask, really. And remember, don't get to, a lot of folks too love. Um, they love drawing characters, but don't forget too that we're also trying to think about. Um, the setting and where they're where they're walking, because that's going to come into play uh, later. And I say I say walking down the street. Street is open to interpret. If you'd rather just have them walking through the desert, or so they just need to be walking in sort of an environment. I guess is what I should say. I think I like the. Um, Anyone ha that has had me for class knows that I just keep talking and I feel like for this workshop, I can we can't really interact. So I'm just gonna keep talking. But, um, you know, I also think what I love about drawing quickly too, is it forces us to simplify things um, and cartooning in a lot of ways is just trying to, trying to simplify things too. So um, that's why I think it works or I like it, I guess. All right, now you have what time is it for? Uh, you have about two and a half minutes. And again, remember you're not you're not using words. If you really need to, if you're really you're like they're walking in front of a laundromat. I mean, you could write laundromat if you want, but um, what could you? How could you show us that it's a laundromat? Um, what are the details? All right, I'm going to give everyone about 30 more seconds. So try to wrap it, try to get to a, you know, kind of put on the finishing touches. And again, don't worry if it, if it didn't turn out how you want it, that's okay. I know I'm asking a lot here to be like, hi, welcome to this workshop. Draw fast, draw fast, draw fast. All right, and then um, let's try, I'll give you, let's try to wrap it up in 10 seconds. Nine, eight, 
I'm not going to count that up. It seems weird. Sorry. But try to put on those finishing touches. And let's go ahead and wrap up this panel. All right. Are folks ready for the next one? All right, I can see Lily's face who I know. So Lily is gonna be my gauge for the audience, the stand in for the audience. So, um, all right, let's go ahead. And you're gonna need a new um, panel, new sticky note index card, piece of paper, whatever you got. And so for the second sentence, I want you to draw the character notices a box on the ground. All right. Um, what kind of box is it? What does it look like? Um, and I want you to try to stick for the purpose of this exercise. I want you to try to stick pretty closely to this. All right. So, um, you know, as far as continuity goes, make sure as if they're walking on the um, on the sidewalk. When they see the box, we want to see that sidewalk there. Um, just think about these things that are good storytelling. Um, and again, box, the box can be whatever you want. Is it a cardboard box? Is it an Amazon box? Is it like I drew this sort of fancy looking as a pentagram on the top? Maybe it's a little bit mysterious, a little bit creepy. Oh, I guess I should do this too. Uh, and again, you'll have about, you have about five-ish minutes. And box is open to interpretation. I guess it just needs to be some closed sort of thing. It could be a Tupperware container. It's really up to you. Sorry, sometimes when I get drawing, I just kind of space out. I should keep an eye on the time. So you've got about two and a half minutes. Now I feel like sometimes that time seems like a lot of time when you're trying to rush and draw it fast and sometimes it doesn't feel like enough time. So I'll give you a little over a minute to finish up. So just keep that in mind. I think sometimes this one doesn't take, the first one is the one that has all the pressure on it. This one's a little bit, a little bit easier, but 
And if you get done, you can, I, I, if, if you want to keep track of things, you can write on the back of your notes or, in, or your index cards. If you want to, you can write down one and two, the order that you're sort of drawing them in. That might come into play later. You don't really have to, um, but if you have some time, folks like to reflect and look back on things. Sometimes having the order that we drew them in is, is helpful. All right, so think about trying to wrap that one up. Um, I'll give you uh, just a little bit longer. All right, and let's try to I didn't give you that much longer. Try to put those finishing touches on it. And wrap it up. And let's go ahead and go to the uh, get a new uh, new panel ready, whether it's a paper index card or sticky note or whatever you got. And the um, so the third is the, th the third sentence is the character opens the box. And so here's the trick. We don't want to see what's in the box. We want to see them opening the box. And this is a really important thing is think about how the character opens the box. That gives us, that kind of tells us something about the character. Um, you know, here, this character I drew, that's essentially me wearing the actually embarrassingly the same, exact same outfit that I'm wearing right now. Um, I didn't plan that, I swear. Um, but, you know, kind of crouch down, very timidly open the box. Maybe they just want to kick the box open. Maybe they are going to be careful like this. Um, but, you know, this, this acting and this body language, how, how characters do things um, is really important um, to kind of, there's little characterization moments, you know, tells us about them. So, and again, um, I know I've been talking, but you have about four minutes to finish this up this one up. I kind of drew myself into a hole <laughs> to figure I had to figure out how to get out of this one. And remember, we're not using any words. It's the big part of this is we're just practicing on our visual storytelling. And about a little over halfway, so we got about two minutes left.
and thanks for the uh, Believer team who's been posting it in the uh, in the chat too. It's nice to have that accessible to everybody in case you kind of come in later, need a review, and I don't review on go backwards on the slides. All right, and I'll give you a little under a minute to finish up. Uh, learning to draw clearly and quickly also comes in very, very, very handy when you're doing thumbnails for uh, projects and you just need to get the ideas out really quick for yourself or for an editor or someone to look at. Um, so again, it's just really good. I know hopefully there aren't too many folks that are stressing out about being like, ah, I can't draw fast. I hate drawing fast under pressure, under time. I know there's enough things that give us anxiety. Um, I hope that you I hope that you're still able to, this isn't giving you anxiety. There's so many things right now that are kind of, that give us, give us that sort of anxiety that hopefully you're still having fun with this. Um, so, all right, i uh, give you just a little, try to finish up if you haven't. And let's go ahead and get our next panel, all right. So get ready to go, locked and loaded. Everyone ready for the, for the fourth one? All right, so the fourth one is the character screams as the react to the contents of the box, all right? And so here's the trick here too. We don't wanna see what's in the box. We just want their reaction. How are they, re it doesn't have to be a scream if they don't want, if you don't want it to be, but it's it's basically they're reacting to the contents of the box. And again, we don't wanna see what's in the box, just their reaction. And again, don't feel like it has to be a scream if you don't want it to be a scream. And there's so many different ways. You could have a, a quiet scream. You could have a loud expressive scream, even if you wanted to keep it a scream. There's so many different ways that you could do that. And again, you'll have, I've been talking for a little bit, but you'll have about four minutes. And again, we're not having, try not to have any words, but what are some, what's, how, how can the expression you're drawing on the character really convey their emotion? Um, you can use emotive lines like I have here. Um, We got about two minutes left. Yeah, and this one probably doesn't take as long as some of the other ones since you're just drawing like a, a close up. But I think we have about a, a minute left, a little under a minute. <clears throat> oh, and I didn't even think that, yeah, of course, Folks could be doing this digitally, so hopefully you're still 
you setting that up in the same way. I, I should, sorry, I wasn't thinking about that. So I should have had those directions in there as well. But all right, go ahead and try to wrap this one up. If you haven't yet, put down the finishing touches. And so I can't remember what my next slide is, but um, basically what I love is, uh, you know, however many of us are here, we're all, we've all told the same story, all right? Right now we have a four panel comic of a character walking down the street, seeing a box, opening the box, and then responding to the contents of the box. But depending on the, the way that we've drawn it, sort of the, the camera angles that we've chosen to use, um, the, all of them are, very, are gonna be very different and have a lot of different um, sort of atmosphere to them and feeling to them. Um, and But what we're gonna do now, and I'm gonna give you eight minutes. I think at this point, everyone's, do, I can get a sense that everyone's drawn really good and really fast. So just to make sure we have time for sharing and stuff at the end, because this exercise is pretty packed. Is, I'm gonna give you eight minutes and I want you to draw two more panels. All right, here's the thing though, is you can add them anywhere you want and they can be whatever you want. Um, if you were like, Jonathan, I've been dying to show what's in the box. Now you can show what's in the box where you can put that anywhere and that using sticky notes lets us move, or index cards or paper or anything, it lets us move it around and kind of figure out where you wanna add things. Um, you know, maybe you wanna know, show us what's in the box, maybe where the box is coming from. Um, but also something else I would say is think about, um, you don't just have to add things to the plot, but you can add things to the pacing and making intention. So like a, a rule of comics is if, something, if you want something to take longer to happen, to slow down time, is you add panels. So if you want them to sort of like open their box really slowly, maybe you add another panel of them opening the box and that's gonna, that's gonna slow that action down. So there's not just, you don't just have to add things that add to the plot or characterization, but we can add things that build tension and create atmosphere too. So again, I've been talking, but um, you know, you have, I'm, I'm just gonna call out four minutes and four minutes and you can kind of use that time. Actually, it's probably three minutes now because I've been talking, but um, just so that we have time, but I'll, I'll call out when it's about time to switch the other panel. So if someone doesn't spend seven minutes trying to draw one panel and then they have to rush one for the, for the last one. All right, so, um, but this is where now you can start like personalizing it too. Um, and, we're all starting with the base story, but now we're getting to kind of make it our own. So again, you can kind of use the time however you want, um, but you got about a, maybe a minute and a half on this first one, um, just to let you know when the time, you know, the time's about, it would be about halfway done. So, and remember we're adding two panels. Excuse me.
All right, and if you haven't, uh, go ahead and uh, switch over and start drawing the next panel just so that you're, I mean, again, some, one panel might take you only a minute to draw and the other one might take longer, but I just want people to be aware of the time. I just realized that I copied the one that was on my slide unintentionally, but that's okay. And I'll give you about another minute and a half. And I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm doing a really bad job about keeping time and I'm just kind of winging it. Um, but you can't really tell because you're spending all your time drawing. So, um, and at this point, you're probably faster at drawing than you were the first panel. So you don't even notice, but I'm, try I'm, I'm trying to give everyone time, but this is, I, I do this with my classes too. I think once you get in the zone, you draw faster than you think you can. to make sure I just want to make sure I'm reviewing everything right for later okay all right how's everyone doing we about I'll give you just a little bit longer to wrap up that last one Try to uh, try to put on the finishing touches, and let's wrap it up. And we're gonna go on to the next stage. So the next stage is I'm gonna give you. We're, I'll give you a little bit less than five minutes, just because I want us to have as much time to share as possible. Let's. I'll give you three minutes, but I want you to add one more panel. All right, look at the story that you've drawn and let's add one more panel. Normally in class when I have a little more time, I might do I might do two more panels, but I think it's okay if we do a lightning round of one more panel. So take a look at your story and see where you can maybe, um, add one more panel and I'll give you, I'll give you three or four minutes. Of this. I think we'll be okay if we have, you know, 15 minutes or so of sharing. And I imagine if we wanted longer that uh, Kristen would let me know. Because there's still one more, one more kind of phase of this that doesn't involve drawing.
and you've got about two more minutes to wrap up this last panel. All right, we have, um, you know, maybe about 30 seconds to wrap up. All right, so try to put the finishing touches on your panel and you can keep her if, you, if you're just like, oh, they just give me some more time. I can give you some more time while I, while I go on to the next slide, but uh, try to wrap up. And we have one more step before we'll end up doing our sharing, but this we'll kind of need it before we go to our sharing. But um, essentially what I want us to do now is we have a seven panel comic. It's all wordless. We're all really focusing on just telling the story through visuals. And we want to lay them out in front of us in the order that you you sort of want the story to be. And now we're going to do sort of like a, a quick sort of editing round. All right. So if you haven't, if uh, try to try to wrap up and again, lay your lay all these panels out in front of you. And basically what I want you to ask yourself is which panels can you remove while still keeping the essence of the story. All right. Um, because maybe like basically um, you can look at each panel and kind of ask yourself, does this panel add something to the plot? Does it add something to the characterization or does it add sort of something to the pacing that creates a quiet moment or create tension and atmosphere? Um, if it doesn't add to one of those three things, you can probably get rid of it. All right. Um, and this also, if you need to, you can maybe look and rearrange panels and see um, if it kind of ends up being more impactful if you have one action before the other. Um, and this, you know, so let's just take a moment to, to do that and see, see how what you can get rid of. And you know you don't have to get rid of anything. Sometimes you know we we don't have the opportunity to kind of you know sit around and look at each other's stories. But you know some folks when I do this exercise, they're not able to get rid of any of their panels because um, and it, the goal isn't to try to get rid of all your panels or anything. It's really just looking at because I think this is a really important thing with comics too. Is um, there's a finite amount of space and drawing takes a long time. Um, and so you want to get thing, a good editor will help you sort of like really get it down to the, the core essence of what it is um, and what you need to do. And this, this works also with not just with wordless comics, but if you're doing any sort of comics, editing is such an important part of the, the process and uh, um, having a good editor really means a lot, but this helps us kind of look at it in that first step of editing. And it's sometimes folks can be like, I can get this down to four panels, maybe not the original four panels, or sometimes maybe three panels or something. You know, it's just kind of interesting to see. And so that's why we'll do some we'll do some sharing here. Um, 
which I think we'll do. I'm going to go ahead and, um, but you know, I guess these are some questions. It's like, as, as you share, maybe you can talk about how many panels, you don't have to answer all these questions, but they're just talking points. How many panels were you able to get rid of? Um, how did your story change when you added your panels? Um, did you shift your rearrange panels? And did you add to the plot or characterization when you added panels? And did you play with time at all? Um, comics is a very time-based medium. Um, so uh, I'm going to st I'll stop sharing. Um, so if anyone wants to, I think that um, you can either raise your hand and the Believer staff will sort of um, call on you and unmute you to present. And all, all that I, I all that we ask is, um, and so you might have to, I mean, if you want, you could just like, I just kind of put mine, my lighting is pretty bad, but I just kind of put them on a sheet of paper like this. Um, if you need to, you could quickly tape them down or just a glue stick on another sheet of paper so we can see what you had. But um, yeah, and so the believer says to, uh, yeah, if you want to raise your hand, um, they'll, they'll call on you, you can share, and then just, yeah, tell us where you're joining from, because there's people from all over, which is really great. So yeah, make sure to say your name and then tell us where you're, where you're joining from. Hi. It's us. Hi. Hi. We're from Pennsylvania. We're from Philadelphia. I'm Rachel. I'm Maxine. I'm John. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, How'd it go? For, thanks for doing this. Well, well. Should I start these? Go for I'll it. Start. Girl, you want it. So, first you want to say like what you're saying? Yeah, this first, uh, it's me, and I'm very, I'm very late for something, so I'm running. Cool. And I find a box. I'm like, what's that box? I'm opening it and like, before it has stripes on it, then you pull the ribbon and the stripes change a lot. Okay. And I really like what's in the box. <laughs> That's a great reaction. Reaching in. And I pull out a puppy. Oh. And then the last one is the puppy licking my face. Oh, that's great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for sharing. That's great. I love it. No, we'll pass it. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry. I'm just gluing. Oh, that's okay. I know it's, it's a multi-step yeah. uh, um, process. So I took one out. I actually took the first one out because it didn't really add anything. So this is the guy walking down the street. Uh -huh. And he sees a box and it's does it looks very kind of funky and it doesn't smell good and he's a little worried. Oops. He's this glue thing may not be. Oh, uh, it's okay. We could yeah, we got it. Um, so he gets kind of freaked out and he opens the box and there's a guy in there. Can you see the guy? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the guy's like shh. And across the street he sees the cop who's looking for the guy. So then he freaks out. So I moved his reaction till oh, after okay. oh, he freaks cool. out when he realizes he, the guy's hiding from a cop and he's not sure what to do. So he kind of waves at the cop, like nothing to see here. Then he drags the box down the street away from the cop. Oh, that's great. I love that that panel with the, um, with the person and the cop shushing and then the cop in the background is such a great setup. So it rec is recognizable as a cop? Yeah, yeah. I oh, think good, the, good. I think the uh, using black and white, especially the black door, and then the black uniform, I think it, it pops out so much. It was done. No, it is great. Great, great job. And I love that. Yeah. I love, I love it. this whole rearranging thing. That was a great intervention. I'm going to try to do that. Awesome. More. Awesome. Thank and you. Where, and what was your name? And where are you? Where are you? Oh, my name is Tenley and I'm in um, Emeryville, California in this horrible smoky air. Oh, you're, you're in smoke too. All right. Well, thank you for so much for sharing. And my children are joining from other parts of the country. So that's Excellent. very fun for me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Oh, I think oh. you're muted. Yes, I'm unmuted now, right? Awesome. Yeah. Hi. OK. I'm Cowie. I'm in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. And we have the smoke that's coming up from Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. No, what? we're all in the same boat. Okay, mm -hmm. so here's uh, my, I, I missed the first part, so I tried to catch up. 
Let me try. Looks like you did a good job. It looks like the character walking, right? Uh, there we go. Yes, it is. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> and then. All right. And then up wait, a little wait, bit wait. so we can oh, see up it. Up a little bit. There That's we okay. go. Oh, and then they see, they see the box. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Looks great. All righty. And then there we go. Uncovering what's in the box. Oh, are they doing it with their beak too? Yeah. See, that's like, I love that moment of characterization. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Good job. And then the outcome. All right, can you hold it up a little uh, okay. up a little higher so we can see? All right, did they eat it? Are they full? Uh, a, a bit full, yes. <laughs> yeah. it's a great, great, um, again, great, good acting, really good acting. So I edited it, uh, the last part okay. out. Cool, so you were able to get it down to like three panels, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because awesome. I was late. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. That was great. Hello. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. So please uh, introduce yourself and tell us where you're visiting from. Okay, sorry. I'm in Montreal, uh, Canada, and my name is Maya. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So I have this octopusy looking mm -hmm. thing walking down this Bulgarian medieval <laughs> street. And then see the box. I love that setting of this, the cobblestone is so great. Yeah, opens the box and freaks out and it finds, I don't know if you can see what that is. It looks like a human heart. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good job. So you were able to get, oh, and then there's the last one. Okay. And this, it takes the heart and then it puts it to its heart. Oh. That's it. I love it. I love that. And at first I thought it was going to be creepy and that ended up being very tender. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seeing I a, human, a human heart in a box is pretty freaky, <laughs> but it had a nice ending. <laughs> yeah. Lily, you're on. Good to see Hi, you. I'm, hello. Um, I'm from Portland as well. Um, okay, so I, this is my first four panels. Um, so this is my first one. We have this little kid coming home from school in a snowstorm. And then he sits down next to this box because he sees it and bucks step on it. And then he's kind of like looking around in this one. He's like, hmm, no one's around. So I'm going to really just check. Look, no one's around. So he's like, I'm gonna open a box because I'm mischievous little boy. Um, and he opens the box and then he's like, oh gosh, I should not have opened this box. <laughs> oh, but we don't know what the mystery is. It's leaving us on a cliffhanger. You gotta come back for more. Uh, oh, yeah. I love it. Good job. Thanks, Lily. Hello. Oops, I think you're on mute. Yeah. Okay. Hey everyone, I'm Faithy. I'm dialing in from San Francisco. Thank you for everyone for sharing and for your instruction. So um, the first panel is, it's a desk. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could see it, like there's a box. Yeah, it looks, it looks perfect. I can perfectly see that, yeah. Hacking and then the next frame is someone like main character walking down the street, kind of bummed and then finds this um, box. It's supposed to be a, some sort of like velvety jewelry box. Okay. Oh, and then they're, they're trying to figure out what's in the box, right? Yeah, could be, you know, jewels. So she opens it, screams, and uh, I'm not good at drawing animals specifically, but that's- It looks a, like a mouse. Yeah. Yes, yes, thank See? you. Oh my God. I think it's a great example of like, <laughs> it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be right. It just has to be clear. And I think it, you did it great. I think that it's clear and I think there's good action of coming out of the box. So yeah, that's really great. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and then I think, do we have, uh, Kristen, do we have time for maybe one more? Cool, all right, hello. Uh, my name is Maren, I'm from Oklahoma. So I'm a little bit farther away but um what i did is i did this lady kind of walking her dog i don't know if you can see it very well but hopefully oh, we can see it great that's a great acting great um 
Oh no, we so um I, I love the character, like that's such a great we get so much personality from not just from the person walking and the dog. That was really, really good. Yeah. Thank you. Um and then they kind of see this dog this box, not this dog, and the dog is just walking still. So she opens the box and I put her like looking into the box. When oh, she great it. shot. Love it. So she reacts to this and the dog is like off the leash but still next to her. So then I just I put in this beat <laughs> of just this dog. <laughs> um so then the dog goes to look in and it's like i couldn't figure out what to draw for the reveal so it's like this <laughs> but so i ended up leaving all of my panels in and they're all kind of stuck to my small sketchbook but oh no that looks great awesome thank you so much for sharing all right hello hello Okay, let's see if I can do this. So, um, wait, where, tell my... us your name and where you're from oh, before yeah. you get started. I love you <laughs> wanting to get into it, but let's. Uh... Yeah, sorry. My name is Katie. I'm from Florida. Okay. So, I'm there. And um, yeah, I started off with this little um, panel, this little like girl. Either her city's underwater, something's happening, and all these ships are just flying above her. Okay. Just down there. And then I tried to do a little bit like she's looking up kind of at these ships mm -hmm. um, on the bridge. And there's kind of a hole in the boat. And then um, this crate basically falls out and falls into the water. I think I kind of cheated on some of them because I did like more than one view. Uh, didn't mean to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's okay. You're not graded on anything. <laughs> yeah. So um, she is just kind of like annoyed by it, looking at it. It's over in the corner. Um, looks at the box she has these really long arms i don't you know because she can and she basically just flips it over and then um notices in the box it's the anchor to one of the ships and i left out this panel of her like freaking out over it because i i don't know i might do it more understated or i feel like it's kind of unnecessary because you kind of need an anchor for your ship to dock so yeah yeah no i think that was a good editing call so cool thanks for sharing thank you all right, do we want to maybe do one more and then we'll wrap up? All right, hello. Hi, uh, I'm Michael from Los Angeles. Hi, Michael. I did, I did this on an iPad here. Oh, look, all right, uh, we can see it perfect though, uh, all the right. Fir the first one is a guy walking down the street. He's wearing a beret and sunglasses. <laughs> uh, and I, I thought you were setting us up to do something about the walk. So I put a tree there with a root that was gonna trip him up. Oh. But, but then I understood what you were doing. So the second panel shows him seeing a round box and, and there are arrows coming out from his eyes looking at the mm -hmm. box. The third one is shows his hands gently unwrapping the ribbon. The fourth one, I couldn't quite get the right expression, but he's looking inside. The fifth one has his hands lifting off the top of the box. And what's in there is a top hat <laughs> so the last one is this guy without his beret, instead wearing a top hat, <laughs> but he took his sunglasses off. Oh, that's great. I do feel like, I feel like that is a, that's like Chekhov's root though. I feel like something's got to happen with that root, right? You don't put a root in a story without it, without it, without it happening. So, um, <laughs> The next <laughs> um, thank you everyone for, um, for we're, we're just about out of time, um, but I just want to uh, thank everyone for um, taking time out of their sort of like crazy, you know, everything that's going on. It's a nice little reprieve to spend an hour with you um, kind of telling stories. And I just want to say that um, if you're making comics and uh, like this sticky notes is such a great way to kind of lay your story out and figure out how how to thumbnail it, how to beat, like how you want the beats to work out without having the pressure of having to cross things off on a page. Um, and I use it all the time actually for the stories I've done for The Believer and even my own comics. Um, I use this sticky note method a lot. Um, and um, and then also please, if you didn't get to share, but you'd still like to share it, or if you shared and you want to take a photo of it, and um, you know, please share it on social media and please tag me. I think they put it in the chat. Um, I'm one of the Johns on Twitter and Instagram, and then please tag the Believer, um, Believer Mag. It's the same. Both of our tags are the same on Instagram and Twitter. But um, again, thank you so much um, for spending your time with me, and I hope um, yeah, I hope you had a good time. 
So, and it's nice seeing new faces and all old faces too. Um, nice seeing folks that I recognize. So, all right. Thank um, you, have a, good, have a good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Bye. I'll stay on and say goodbye to everyone because it's nice to see all these waving faces. I don't get out at all anymore. So this is the only human contact I have.